Building up a scorecard structure is one of the first steps to a successful implementation in Spider Impact. Before I build a scorecard, I'll take a look at a pre-developed one for Mobile World. On the primary navigation pane on the left, I'll select scorecards. Using the suitcase icon at the top, I can review a pre-built organizational structure which contains the company level and many departments beneath that. Key thing to note is that Spider Impact only allows one item at the root level, in this case Spider Impact, but allows for an extensive structure beneath that. If I expand Sales for instance, I see a tree structure that goes five levels deep with even more orgs beneath the US. I'll minimize that. Now if I want to select a particular level like the company level mobile world, I simply click on it and then choose select. I now see a scorecard which has already been developed using the classic balance scorecard design, containing the financial, customer, internal processes, and organizational capacity perspectives. Each of those perspectives are fed scores from underlying objectives, which are fed scores from underlying measures. My goal now is to illustrate the development of a new scorecard and organizational hierarchy from scratch. To do so, I'll click the suitcase icon at the top, select Spider Impact, and then select Edit in the bottom right. My next step is to select New Organization, type in a desired name for the new org, I'll call it Training, and select Add Organization. Once I do that, the new item will exist at the bottom of the listing of the organizations. Note that the new organization looks different than the orgs above it. It contains an empty circle versus a filled in circle because there are no scorecards yet tied to it. I'll click done to remove myself from edit mode and then click select to select that organization. The first thing that gets presented to me is the opportunity to create scorecard or import scorecard items. I'll select create scorecard to build it manually and I'll provide a name of training. I could provide a description and a tag, but I'll leave those blank and select Create. Now that a scorecard exists, it will now assume that I'll build up the scorecard in the traditional way of first defining perspectives. I'll do just that by typing the name of Financial. On the right, I could change the type to something else, like an objective or a measure, but I'll leave those alone. And I'll select Create. After the item's created, Spider Impact assumes I'll be creating another perspective. In this case, I will, so I'll type the name Customer and select Create. Once I'm done creating perspectives, I can click one of the perspectives already created, and the auto-generated item will automatically disappear. Once I'm ready to create objectives, I'll select the appropriate perspective, which in this case I have, financial, and then select new scorecard item at the top. Notice that instead of building items at the same level, like with perspectives previously, I now have a tiered structure going on with the objective residing beneath the perspective. With that looking correct, I'll type the name of increased revenue. Confirm the type of object is objective, and then I'll select Create. I could load additional financial objectives, but for the sake of time, I'll make that the last objective I need and move on to the creation of measures. I'll click on the new objective and once again select new scorecard item. The hierarchy once again looks correct, cascading from a perspective to objective to measure. So I'll type product revenue for the name and confirm that the type is a measure. Moving down to the measure details section for scoring type, Spider Impact provides a number of different options. Unscored, a simple yes, no, and so on. The most commonly deployed option is the default option of goal red flag, which, which provides three colors, red, yellow, green, in a zero to 10 normalized scoring range. In this case, I'm happy with the default, so I'll just click away. Moving to the right, 
I can change the frequency of which any measure is updated from monthly to quarterly to yearly. Once again, I'm happy with the default of monthly, so I'll just click away. To the right of that is data type, which options of number, percentage, and currency. Given that this is a revenue metric, I'll select currency. Moving down to aggregation type, it allows me to set how the data should be aggregated if I move to a different periodicity, like quarterly or yearly. Since these are revenue numbers, I just want them to be summed, so I'll leave the default of sum and move away. To the right of that is decimal precision, which can contain a decimal display of zero to four digits. Once again, I'm happy with the default, so I'll click away and move on to currency. Under currency, I can change the type. Since I'm a US-based co company, I'm going to select USD here. Moving now to the field section, the series is going to reflect the scoring type defined earlier, in which I accepted the default of goal and red flag. If I go back to scoring type and switch it to three color, notice how the section automatically changes to include entries for best and worst. I'll set it back to goal and red flag, move back to that section, and I'll set threshold values for red flag and goal. The red flag for product revenue is going to be 440,000, meaning if I dip below that value, I'll get a normalized score between 0 and 3.33 and be in the red. The goal is going to be 470,000, meaning if I go above that value, I'll get a normalized score between 6.67 and 10 and be in the green. Anything between 440 and 470 will be between 3.34 and 6.66 and be in the yellow. Moving further down, I have the opportunity to set the measure owner and update. I'll choose myself for both options. After setting all the properties for product revenue, I'll give things a quick review and then select create in the bottom right. Once again, Spider Impact assumes I want to create another item. And in fact, I do, as I want to create training revenue. Important thing to note this time around is the product now defaults to all of the settings that I just used for product revenue. I had switched data type to currency and the currency to dollars. And those settings have now come, come through as the new default. The only thing I need to do is set the red flag to perhaps a different value. I'll make this 200,000 and the goal to 20. Once again, I'll set myself as the owner and the updater. So I'm done with that. I'll select create. I'm going to quickly create one more measure named book revenue. This time I'll set the red flag value as 50,000, goal is 70,000, and make myself the owner and updater, and select create. At this point we've defined three measures under the increased revenue objective. One item I do want to point out is the concept of waiting. After a measure has been defined, if I click on it, I'll select product revenue. I'll see a weight of 33.33% has been automatically applied to it. What Spider Impact will do is evenly divide the number of measures when assigning the weight. In this case, 100 divided by the three measures is 33.33. I do have the ability to override that by clicking weight and perhaps assigning product revenue double the importance of the other two measures by changing it to two. I would then select save. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that back to one. Another option is the ability to assign differing weights over time. For example, I'll select Edit icon next to Product Revenue, and then select Add Weight Change. If I wanted to start quadrupling the importance of the measure in October, I'll select the calendar and change the date to October 1st. I would then change the weight to 4 and click Done.
The product now signifies the fact that there are different weights for different periods with the two. Important note is that the weighting will impact the normalized scoring in the roll-up to the next level. So if product revenue was red and I made it four times more important than the other two measures like I just did, odds are the increased revenue objective will also be red, even if the other two are green. To put the weight back to one, I'll click the edit icon, delete the second row, and click done. The number two has now disappeared and I'm back to the default. At this point I can either select save or cancel. Another item I'd like to discuss is the concept of calculated measures. To do so, I'll create one more measure beneath increased revenue. I'll select it, and then select new scorecard item. And I'll introduce a fourth measure called total revenue. Unlike the others, this measure will not impact the performance score of the increased revenue objective. I'm adding it solely for tracking purposes. Under scoring type, for the first time I'll deviate from the default of goal red flag and I'll change it to unscored. Everything else under the measure detail section will be left exactly the same as the other measures. Under the field section I'll change the actual value from manual to calculated. When I do that a new option appears where I can select a set equation and proceed to define a calculation that sums up the other three measures. To start the equation, I'll click on Select a Measure and navigate to the Increase Revenue objective. I'll select Product Revenue and then select Done. My last step is to select Add and at that point it will now add it to the equation box at the top. The measure ID is displayed, which is the behind the scenes identifier for the product revenue measure. Since I have more measures to add, I'll type a plus sign. I'll click on the measure selection screen again. This time I'll select training revenue, select done, and select add to add it to the equation. I'll insert the plus one more time. Go back to the measure selection, select book revenue, select done, and select add. As I'm all set, I'll click done to leave the screen, and then select create to create the measure. If I click total revenue, since it's an unscored measure, notice that the weight is zero. If I click weight, notice how the other three measures that were originally there are still at their weight of 33.33%. Having no changes to make, I'll select cancel to close this window. Now at this point I could add all of my measures and objectives across all the perspectives, but for the sake of time I'll assume I've built up a complete structure and select done in the bottom left. The last thing I'd like to do is to load a few actual values from my measures so I can see some colorized scoring. If I click on product revenue, I'll see the red and gold values defined when I added the measure, which is 440,000 and 470,000. However, I have no actual values loaded as yet and hence have no normalized score. By default, I'm looking at the current month, which is, in this case, is September. To enter values manually for that month, I'll click on the update icon. I'll type in 480,000 and click save. When I do that, I'll notice a change in the performance section in the top left. My alert is now populated with an actual value. A normalized score of 7.78 was generated and the green section has been filled in. Since I entered an actual value that is above my goal, I know that I'll be in the green, and my normalized score will be between 6.67 and 10. If I toggle to any other month but September, I'll see just the threshold values with no score since no other actual values have been loaded. I'll return back to September. If I have a lot of values to update, there's an easier method to load them on the home page, and I'll go ahead and select home. 
I'll then select update measures in the top left. The default is to show all measures for all my organizations. If I'm overwhelmed by that list then I want to narrow it down to just the financial measures I just defined. I'll select the funnel icon up at the top. I'll select the organization drop down and I'll choose training. I see that of the three measures, I've only updated product revenue for September. If I wanted to open this up to more time periods, in the top right, I could go to the drop down, switch it maybe to quarterly, and select show results. And I now have the ability to upload data for July, August, and September. But to save myself some time here, I'll switch this back to monthly. I'll now go ahead and enter the values for the other two measures. For training revenue, I'll make that 210,000, and for book revenue, I'll make that 50,000. I'll then select Update Measures in the bottom right. Spider Impact will then save the values for anything that had not been entered previously and briefly display a message accordingly. If I'm done entering values, I can go back to scorecards. If I expand the financial section and the increased revenue objective, I'll see that for September, my product revenue is green, training revenue is yellow, and my book revenue is in the red. If I click on the unscored measure total revenue, I'll see it looks completely different. There is no colored score, only a total revenue value of 740,000, which is the correct sum of 480, 210, and 50. If I click on increase revenue, I'll see a normalized score of 5.37, which is the normalized score of each of the weighted measures below it divided by 3. If I click on the financial perspective, I'll see that same normalized score of 5.37, since there's just the one objective that feeds it. If I click the training scorecard, once again I see the same normalized score, since I have not yet loaded any values for the customer perspective.